All right, I should be live on my Facebook and waiting on my Periscope to come up. And there we go. Hello, Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly uh, prophetic word. So let's dive right in because, as always, I have a lot to tell you. Okay, so let's start off with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your prophetic word, oh God. We thank you that we live by your word. So I surrender, Lord. I surrender my brain, my mouth, my lips, my tongue, my hands. I surrender everything to the Holy Ghost. I should use me, oh God. Speak through me. Breathe through me. Let the fire and the breath of God flow through me, oh God, that you might release the word that you want the saints to hear, that you might be glorified and that the saints might be edified and that the demons might be terrified. Tear up, tear down, destroy every stronghold of Satan and establish us, oh, oh God, in the land that you have given to us and our fathers through promise. Because we want to glorify you in this life and look forward to a full reward in the life to come. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Amen and amen. <clears throat> so traffic was uh, really rough on the way home, but I made it. So we're going to jump right in. So, again, welcome to my Facebook audience. Thank you for everybody that's watching me live on Facebook, and welcome to my Periscope audience. Um, uh, we're going to start off with my tagline. What's my tagline? My tagline is that God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. <laughs> One more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. Okay? That's one of the advantages of being a Christian is that you can know things before they happen. But you have to tap into the prophetic flow for that. All right, I'm going, to give you a, I'm going to give you a lot of information as always, so you're going to have to watch this video more than once. Um, I'm live on Facebook and Periscope, and then you can watch the replay also on my YouTube channel, Prophet David Taylor. Please, please uh, like and share this video, because whenever God releases a prophetic word, it's designed to change something, change a family, change a city, change uh, a nation, change the world. So please like and share this video as many places as you can. If you want to sow into my ministry, I have a paypal.me link on my Facebook and my Periscope and my YouTube, or you can give to my Amazon Smile for my profit, David Taylor, not-for-profit corporation. I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT, Prophet David Taylor, so that's how you find me online. Okay? My regular times, are, I'm live this time, Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and on the second Thursday night of each month at 7 o'clock, I do a program called No More Genies where we deal with our genie concept of God. Because God is not a genie, but much of our religious background has made us think he is. So we have to get rid of that and get into the word to get into real faith. Okay? All right. Diving into today's lesson. Uh, uh, the prophetic word for today is eat in plenty. Eat in plenty. Now, what in the world am I talking about? I'm going to show you, <laughs> okay? I have a prophetic word I need to release, and then we're going to dive into the scripture. For behold, my people, says the Lord, I never meant for you to always be traveling and never arriving. I never meant for you to spend your life struggling. I never meant for you to spend your life in debt. For yea, the days do come, and they now are, where you shall sit down, be established, grow, be prosperous, and eat in plenty and be satisfied, where you will have more than enough for yourself and your family and to share with those less fortunate with you. I have brought you into the days where it's time for you to reap a harvest of more than enough, and you're going to eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise me and thank me for the goodness that I have showered upon you, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Okay? So let's look at the scriptures to back that up. And I want to interpret that prophetic word as we look at the scriptures. We're going to look at a very familiar passage of scripture. We're going to look at the book of Joel. Joel is in the Old Testament. We're going to look at Joel chapter 2. Now, remember I told you that Joel is a minor prophet, but the difference between major and minor prophets is not that their messages were more or less important. The difference between major or minor prophets is the size of their books, and that's all. 
So when you see someone in the Old Testament called a major prophet, it just means that they had a lot more to say. Isaiah, Jeremiah, for example, Daniel. When you see someone called a minor prophet, Noah, not Noah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Joel, those are called minor prophets. Not because their message is less important. It's only because their books were smaller. That's all that means. Okay? All right. So we're going to look at, I want to start with verses, uh, we're going to look at Joel chapter 2, and I want to start with verse 19. Joel chapter 2, verse 19, and I want to interpret that prophetic word I just gave you. So Joel chapter 2, verse 19 says, I'm reading out of the King James Version, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you reproach among the heathen. Okay, when the Lord says he's going to answer and say he will send you corn and wine and oil, corn in the Bible is representative of seed and sustenance. So in other words, the, the thing you need to sustain you, enough food that you need, but also seed to plant. That's what corn represents. Wine represents many things. Wine can represent uh, being rich, being opulent, being well-to-do. Wine can also represent the blood, okay, the blood of the Lord. And wine can also represent new revelation. It can represent God pouring out a new refreshing onto you. That's why I said you can't put new wine in old wineskins, okay? And oil. Oil always represents the Holy Ghost. But the word anointing, coming out of the Hebrew and Greek, one of the translations means fatness. And when you see the word oil in English, in Hebrew often, it means fatness. And what it means is, is the thickness, the goodness, the wealth, the richness of whatever you're talking about. In other words, the full measure of it and the running over of it. So God says he's going to send us sustenance, he's going to send us opulence, and he's going to send us fatness. Now, why is that so important? Because of that prophetic word I just gave, that God had never meant for you to be in debt your whole life. God had never meant for you to be struggling your whole life. And I'm sad to say that some people live and die with the idea that life is just about traveling but never arriving. The life is just about struggling but never making it over. That is not true. That is particularly not true for God's people. Okay? Uh, if you go through a season or a period of testing, if you go through certain things, that's just it. You're going through them. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And what God does when you walk through the valleys is he teaches you the lessons that you need to learn. Because as the good shepherd, he's trying to prepare you for what's coming up next. And we are in the season now where we're supposed to arrive in the promised land, where we're supposed to thrive, where we're supposed to have sustenance, where we're supposed to have opulence and new revelation, and where we're supposed to have the fatness, the thickness, the fullness. You're not supposed to be struggling forever. And do you know why some people struggle forever? Because that's what they believe. And that's what they confess. And the Lord already told you, you going to have what you say. If you keep making your bills be bigger than God with your words, that's where you're going to stay. That's the mistake that the first generation uh, that came out of Egypt made. They made the, the, the giants bigger than God. And God just spent all that time giving them miracle after miracle after miracle to deliver them and take them through the wilderness to show them he was bigger than any circumstance, and they got to the edge of the promised land and still didn't believe God, and they didn't make it. I want to go on record as saying that wasn't because God didn't want them to make it. That was because of their unbelief. And that's what happens when you listen to and hang around people that believe that life is nothing but a always struggle. I want you to notice that nothing in nature does that. Everything in nature finds an environment, it takes root, and then it becomes fruitful. Then it multiplies. Did you notice that? 
no matter what kind of animal, creature, vegetable, mineral, insect, bug, bird you're talking about, it's going to find an environment, it's going to make some type of habitat, and then it's going to produce. So why do people think it's not supposed to be that way with us? You are supposed to find your place in God, find your place in life, put down some roots, and produce. You're not supposed to be struggling and traveling and and just, you know, Papa was a rolling stone all your whole life. It's not supposed to be like that. Can you see that? So, so to do that, however, you need the things that the Lord promises in today's scripture lesson, Joel 2.19. You need corn, you need sustenance, because you can't put roots down if you're worried about meals all the time, if you're worried about what we're going to eat, how we're going to eat. Because, you know, when we can't deal with our basic needs and we will do anything, we get into doing desperate things, which you will do just to eat. So you need corn, but you also need wine. Why do you need wine? Because you need fresh revelation. You need also the cleansing blood of Jesus. But you also need opulence. Okay? You need splendor. You need glory. You need wealth. Because it takes wealth to build your dreams. You can't build your dreams on, on a just getting by level of finances. Okay? You need wealth to actually build something. And the wealthiest people in the world are always entrepreneurs and creators. Every time. Study wealth in this country. Study J.P. Morgan. Study Andrew Carnegie. Study the Rockefellers. Study Bill Gates. Study uh, Steve Jobs. They created stuff. Okay? And you need wealth to create. You can't create on, you know, just barely getting by. Okay? So corn and wine and then oil. What is oil? Oil is fatness. It means the thickness, the fullness. It means your cup is running over. It means you have the full measure plus of whatever it is that you're dealing with. And when you get into oil, oil will always run off you onto somebody else. Just saw that this morning. We had a, a guest speaker, and then uh, my pastor was preaching about some things, and then uh, Prophetess Tony came up, and when, when the anointing oil is flowing, it just starts to flow. It just runs out of you, and it ends up blessing other people. You ever notice that? When you get in a prophetic flow, it never stays with you. It always runs off into other people. You see what I mean? Uh, yeah, my son talking about a lot of those wealthy people were C students. They weren't even A students, okay? But they were creative. They created something. And so when that oil begins to flow, it, it, it's rich, it's thick, it's fat. You can, when you're in a prophetic flow, depending on what the Holy Ghost is showing you, sometimes you can see days in the future. Sometimes you can see weeks in the future. Sometimes you can see months in the future. Sometimes you can see years in the future. Sometimes you can see decades in the future. And Apostle John that wrote the book of Revelation saw the end of the world. Do you see what I mean? That's a flow. That's just not today. <laughs> That's all the days or however many days the Holy Ghost is showing you. That's a thickness, a fatness. That's an advantage you have as a Christian when God pours the oil of the prophetic off on you. And any oil that God pours is like that. Haven't you ever seen somebody sing under the anointing? When they sing, it don't just stay with them, does it? The Holy Ghost falls, and then the whole house gets filled with the glory of God. Have you noticed that? Okay? Because that's what it's like when God releases oil. Okay? So for you to really be prosperous, for you to really grow, for you to really... Uh, become all that God wants you to be. You need corn, you need wine, and you need oil. And that's what God says. Then he says in that same verse, verse 19, ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you reproach among the heathen. Being satisfied is key. Why is being satisfied? Because you don't have any need to go out and, and reach for something wrong when you're satisfied. That's why the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. When God fills you with joy, you have to praise him. You have to dance. You have to wave your hand. You have to cry because you can't hold the joy of the Lord in, inside of you. You have to witness. You have to go out and evangelize, okay, because that's what makes your strength. So when the devil can drain that from you, that's when you start thinking crazy thoughts. That's when you start thinking about other ways to meet your needs other than the ways that God says because the joy has gone out. See, and joy is a product of the fatness. And then he also says, you got to be satisfied. 
You got to be satisfied with your life. You got to wake up every day and look at your life and say, this is what I had in mind. Or this is even better than what I had in mind. See, that's really, see, when you wake up and you're in the place you want to live, you wake up with a smile on your face just because you love your, your, your living space. When you're married to the right person, when you have the money that you need, when you have the influence, when you have the access, whatever it is that you envisioned in here, when it comes to live out here, you wake up every day and you are satisfied. I know when I'm doing my thing, I know when I'm doing my creative thing, when I'm trying to go to sleep, it feels like Christmas Eve. I can't sleep. I'm so excited because I can't wake up and, and do my creative thing when I'm working on something. And I was just, and I got a, an idea for a play uh, a couple of years ago, and I got it on an airplane while I was flying out to minister. I got an idea for a play I'm writing, and I've been writing it kind of slowly ever since. And I got some more ideas on the way home today, and that thing is just all in me. I can't wait to bring it out here. You see what I mean? Because it satisfies me to write. It satisfies me to create. Because that's what I was born to do. Okay? And then verse 19 says, I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Well, that means no more embarrassment. If your credit card don't go through or your credit is bad or you can't afford stuff or... Because we're not a testimony to the Lord when we don't have more than enough. So that's why the devil tries so hard to put us under a poverty spirit and get us to develop a poverty mindset, mindset to make you say poverty-based things and to make you hang around poverty people. That's why Satan wars so hard, because then it makes you a reproach among the heathen. And what that means in plain English is it makes your God not be attractive because it makes it look like he can't take care of you. Why would anybody want to convert to Christianity if you've got a God that can't take care of you? So that's why Satan comes at our finances so hard. And if you've been sowing and you've been giving and you've been trying to become a better financial steward, and if you've made a pledge or a vow to the Lord to increase your giving or to do more alms for the poor, then Satan has come at you hard. He came at you harder than you thought he would. Mm -hmm. Well, God is saying now is the time for the Lord to bring that payback in our lives, the corn and the wine and the oil and the establishment of ourselves, and the richness, and the fullness, and the more than enough. And when you have more than enough of anything, you're not a reproach to anybody. People are happy to know you. When you have more than enough joy, more than enough money, more than enough anything, people want to be around you because you're rich. You see, you're full, that kind of thing. So let's move on to verse uh, 24. It says, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. Okay, once again, talk about your floors are full of wheat. Wheat is the same thing with corn. It's a grain. That means it represents sustenance and seed. Okay? But out of wheat, you can also make bread. Okay? There it is, talking about uh, uh, the sustenance of God. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. There it is again. Now, I want to teach you a principle about Scripture. Whenever you see God repeat himself, he's trying to hammer a point home. He's trying to say in big neon letters, this is important. So whenever you read a passage of Scripture, if you see the Lord saying the same thing over and over again, he's trying to emphasize something to you. He's trying to say, this is important. Pay attention. Okay? So, uh, again, in this chapter, he says, wheat, which is another grain, seed and sustenance, but the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Vats, how do they make wine? They put the fermented grapes, at least in France they do, they put the fermented grapes in a big old vat, and then they step on them and they crush them, okay? And, you're, and you store your oil in vats and glasses and whatever kind of where, you know, tablewares that you have. So God is saying you're going to have more than enough. That's the second time in this chapter the Lord is saying the same thing. That means pay attention. Why am I emphasizing that? Why is that important? Because you have to start saying what God is saying. Remember I told you, you've got to rebuke the spirit of poverty. You have to get out of your poverty mindset. But you got to control this. you got to say what the scripture is saying. Okay? Because that's how you release your faith. And that's what the Spirit of God needs to make that which is in the invisible come out here in the visible. 
How do we know that's true? Because that's how God made the world. God said, let there be light, and there was light. You understand? God didn't just get up there, hover over the earth, and say nothing. He said what he wanted. He said, let there be light. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the deep. That's how it works. So since we're made in his image, we have to do it the way he does it. So you've got to say what God says, and you've got to say that, that my floors are full of wheat. My vats do overflow with wine and oil. A few more things I want to show you in here. Verse 26 is where uh, the title comes from for today's prophetic word. Verse 26 says, And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Okay, once again, ye shall eat in plenty. That means you're supposed to have more than enough. You're supposed to have more than enough. You're supposed to have more than enough. You're going to eat in plenty and be satisfied. Okay? If you eat and that stomach is still grumbling and rumbling, you might have to go back for seconds. My family has a saying. It said, I didn't quite come out even. So you might have to get a second plate. But you're supposed to have more than enough to be satisfied. And then it says, and praise the name of the Lord your God. It, it's never more fun. We're supposed to praise the Lord continually, but it's never more fun praising God than when we have a good day at work, when we have a good meal, when you have a good relationship with your spouse, when you have a good relationship with your children, when you feel safe, when your house is safe, when you've got more than enough, and then when you've gotten to the point in your life and ministry where you are mentoring others, where you are taking what God has poured into you, and you're teaching other people how to walk in what God has given you. What is more satisfying than that? Nothing. Okay? The first people you're supposed to pour into is your spouse. If you marry, when God pours into you, you're supposed to share that revelation with the one because you are one with them. You took vows. You, you were supposed to leave and cleave to become one. A lot of people skip that step, which just amazes me. You're supposed to be pouring into your spouse. There's nothing like having somebody in your life that believes in you. There's nothing like having somebody in your life to where every time you turn around, they got something good to say. There's nothing like having somebody in your life to where when they see you, they see the best in you. Do you know how I know that's true? Because that's the way God treats us. Many times we come to the Lord with our mistakes, our faults, and our flaws, and God says, confess your sins, I'll wash you with the blood, and then the Lord got something good to say. He's amazing like that. He's amazing like that. He will point out to you the stuff you did right. You busy tripping on the stuff you did wrong. And when you come before Jesus, he said, but you did this, 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 and this right. And it just changes your whole mindset. Well, if that's the kind of love he pours into us, we're supposed to pour into our spouses that way, just like that. Next people you're supposed to pour into is your children. And if you've got biological children, you're supposed to pour the goodness of God into them. If you don't have biological children, then God will give you spiritual children so you can pour into them. You see that? So that's how you get the satisfaction in life. The oil doesn't just stay with you. It flows in your life, but it flows through your life. If you are stopping up the flow of the oil, I guarantee you, you are frustrated. If you've been called to prophesy, excuse me, dry lip. If you've been called to prophesy and you don't have anywhere to prophesy, you are frustrated. I guarantee you are very frustrated. Watching me right now, if you've been called to prophesy, you ain't got nowhere to prophesy, I guarantee you're frustrated. If you've been called to teach and you're not giving any seminars, I guarantee you're frustrated. If you've been called to preach and you ain't preaching, I guarantee you're frustrated. You know why? Because the oil is not supposed to stay inside you. It's supposed to flow out of you. And then you will get a satisfaction like you never had before, when not only do you have plenty, but I've got the overflow so I can share what I have with you. Eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. You see that? So God is saying he's brought us into that season. Now, I personally know and, and, and you know my close people know uh, some of my struggles in the last year. But God is saying he's brought us into that time, the time of the overflow, the fatness. But we got to say it. we got to confess it. And you got to believe it. 
You see that? Because God's kingdom operates by faith. Never forget that when God wanted something, he always said it first. Let there be light. Let uh, the greater light rule the day and the lesser light rule the night. Let the air bring forth every manner of fowl and winged creature. Let the ground bring forth every manner of, of four-footed beast. Let the seas be filled with every manner of aquatic life. And then when he wanted humans, what did he say? He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air. He said it before he did it every time. Read the creation story in Genesis 1 and 2, and you will see that every time God got ready to, to bring something forth, he said it. And then the Spirit of God moved upon it, and it, it appeared out here when it was in the invisible world. So if that's the way he operates, that's the way we have to operate. That's why I keep telling you, when you see uh, in Scripture where the Lord says something more than one time, he's trying to show you how important this thing is. And you have to believe God for that opulence, that sustenance, that opulence, that fatness, and that richness. Okay? Because it's time to move into that. You're not supposed to struggle your whole life. You're not supposed to, you know, be in debt your whole life. You're not supposed to live and die and not have a chance to build your dreams. God never meant for his children to live that way. Okay? And, before I move to the next section, you can't hang around people that think that way. And you can't hang around people that talk that way, okay? They will end up stopping up the flow of faith in your life. That's a huge mistake. Why do you think there's a difference in Christians? People always misinterpret that. People always think that that's God playing favors, but the Bible says 26 times there is no respect to persons with God. That's not God. That's that some people believe God and some people don't. Uh, my pastor's been doing a series on miracles. We had a guest pastor in today that did some miracles. He made uh, a man and a woman, both that had been struggling with their knees, he made them run up and down the, the aisle. The, uh, the man said, I've just been learning how to walk again, and then he ran up and down the aisle. And the woman said she had been pain, and she said her knees had been so worn down, all the cartilage was gone, and she was this close to bone on bone. The man said, you, you're not going to have to go back to the doctor. Now run him down the aisle. And she did. <laughs> because the anointing for miracles was there. The flow of miracles was there. You can't hang around people that don't believe God and don't speak the word. They'll stop your flow. And that's what stops your blessings. Think about it. Because you're going to have to examine every area of your life. And you're going to have to figure out, who am I listening to? Because you're going to have to get away from that unbelief. Okay? All right, because unbelief stops the power of God. It doesn't mean that God loses his power. It means that his power will stop flowing in your life if you don't believe it. Okay? Some people have even gotten that from their parents, I'm sad to say. If your parents struggled their whole life, it's because they believe they had to. Because you don't have to when you know the Lord. You don't have to struggle your whole life. God does not just want to bring you out. He wants to bring you in. Understand? All right, so uh, now we get to the point where if we have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. So if you've got any prayer requests, anything you want me to pray for, put them on the screen now, and I'll pray for them. Or if you have any questions about what I was teaching, put those on the screen too. Because it's time for us to get in that flow. Another thing I want to add to the reason that the flow is so important is that you have to understand the timing of God. You have to understand the seasons of God. What do I mean by that? You've heard me say it before, but I'll repeat it. Whatever God wanted you to do in March needs to be done by today, because tomorrow's April, and God's got some new stuff that's going to break forth in April. So you need to get March's stuff done today. January, February, March is the end of quarter one. You don't need to be doing quarter one stuff next month in quarter two. But that principle, all right, pray for a flow and miracles, all right, but that principle is deeper than you think it is. There are some things that God planted in 2015 that are going to come to fruition in 2035, 20 years from 2015. There are some people that God sent into the earth that were born in 2015 that are going to come to power in 2035. That's what I mean. And so you've got to get in sync with the timing and the seasons of God 
so that you can stay in step with what the Lord is doing. Because by the time we get to December of this year, December of 2019, you need to be doing quarter four stuff. You don't need to still be working on stuff that God told you in January to get finished before quarter one. That's what I mean. That's how important the flow is. Okay? That's how important it is. And that's how some people end up missing their blessing. They're out of step. They're out of sync. Okay? So take that seriously. Okay. I got a prayer request for a flow in miracles. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over David and I pray for all that are listening, oh God, that you would increase our faith, that you would bring us to that level, oh God, to where we can flow in miracles. Because we need miracles, oh God. We need, if we're in a wrong place, oh God, or if we, you're going to kick off something new in our lives, or if we have a Red Sea in front of us and an angry Pharaoh behind us, oh God, whatever the circumstances, we need your hand, we need your power, we need the hand of God Almighty to step in, Oh, God, and deliver us. And that only comes through a miracle. So I pray, oh, God, for the increased flow of miracles, that we may walk in miracles, that we may believe miracles, that we, that we can confess miracles from the Scripture, and that they will manifest in our lives so we can eat in plenty and be satisfied and give you the glory for all things. And I thank you for it, and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, remember, one of the keys to walking in that flow in mir miracles is you got to hang around people that walk in the flow of miracles. Uh, like my pastor, Apostle Eckhart, uh, flowing in miracles. He knows people that flows in miracles, and he brings people that flow in miracles to the church. You got to hang around people that flow in miracles. You got to think miracles. You got to say it. You got to confess it. That's what the Spirit of God moves on, just like when God made the world. Okay? All right, great. Any other prayer requests? Put them on the screen. Okay? Now, when you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost for uh, if there's any need for physical healing, casting out demons, or for finances. So that's what we're going to go into now. I'm going to close my eyes and pray in tongues and listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying about those three areas. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me somebody's struggling with their throat. Put your right hand on your throat and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my trachea to open. I command my larynx to be whole. I command my esophagus to be 100% whole. I command my airflow to be good. I command my food flow to be good. And I command all soreness and pain to leave in the name of Jesus. I break soreness off my throat. I break pain off my throat. And I command it to be a 100% whole in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because by his stripes, I was healed. Amen and amen. Okay, the Holy Ghost is showing me somebody uh, struggling with their stomach. Put your hand on the sides uh, of your stomach, on, you know, right uh, on the sides of your stomach, but not on your back or your kidneys, but right on the side. Say, in the name of Jesus, I command health and healing in my stomach, all the way through my stomach, my stomach lining, uh, everything I'm eating, I command my stomach to be 100% whole. Now do this. Switch positions. Put your right hand on your belly button and your left hand on your back. And say it again, in the name of Jesus, I command my stomach to be 100% whole. My stomach lining, lining, everything I'm eating, my digestive system, everything be whole right now in Jesus' name with no problems, no pain. I break pain off of my stomach and I command my stomach to be 100% whole in the name of Jesus. You'll feel the power of God flow through your body when you do it just like I told you. You'll feel it. It'll be unmistakable. Also, just so you know, if somebody's praying for somebody else in a room and they're releasing an anointing on them, you can pick it up too. I wasn't having problems with my knees, but when uh, the pastor prayed this morning and blessed the knees of those people that were having problems, I felt power fall on my knees and my knees felt really good. Okay? So that's why you want to be in an atmosphere of miracles because you can pick stuff if you didn't know that. When things are flowing in the Spirit, you can reach out and pick them up too. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. That's very real. Mm. The Holy Ghost is telling me about unbelief. So in the name of Jesus, I cast out the spirit of unbelief. I command you to break off people's heads. I command you to get out of their ear. In the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of unbelief from the root. For you are not of God. 
for the just shall live by faith. So I command you to dry up from the root, leave the person, leave their house, leave their family, leave the area. You can't jump on anybody else. In the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of unbelief and I release the spirit of faith that we will believe God in the fullness, that we will believe in the God that raised Jesus from the dead, that we will believe him and take him at his word that all of his blessings might manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare it and decree it, and it is so. Amen. Okay? Holy Ghost is saying, I need to break witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of witchcraft, witchcraft from the root, and I command you to break off the person. Okay? You will not seduce them into doing things Satan's way. I rebuke the spirit of mind control. I rebuke the spirit of seduction. I rebuke the spirit of idol worship to pull you away to worshiping anything other than our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's witchcraft. For thou shalt have no other gods before me, says the Lord. We worship Father God. We worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We worship in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I rebuke the spirit of witchcraft and I command you to come off of the person Jesus' name. Break off their head. Get out of their ear. Get out of their mouth. Get out of their tongue. No seduction from the devil. No mind control. I curse you from the root, and I command you to leave that person alone in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because the demons are subject, subject to us in the name of Jesus. Okay? Now, I'm feeling that virtue grow out of me, so whoever that was for, that got broken off, and you don't have to walk in that anymore. But what you do need to do is get filled with the Holy Ghost. Because when you cast out demons, they wander around for a while, then they try to come back. So when you get demons broke off of you, the, the vessel is clean, but you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost so your vessel gets full. How do you get filled with the Holy Ghost? Okay, I'll lead you. I taught you that last week, but I'll show you again. This is how you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You ask the Lord. You have to raise, well, you don't have to raise your hands, but I always recommend raising your hands because you need to praise Him and thank Him. Okay, you need to go before the Lord and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, please fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with all your desires. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your wisdom. Fill me with your knowledge. Fill me with your prophetic flow. And fill me with everything you want me to have. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, fill me with the precious Holy Ghost. Then raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for filling me with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Yeah, see, there it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you'll feel it. You'll feel the power of God flow through you. You will feel it. Okay? And however it is you respond to the Holy Ghost, everybody's different. Some people dance. Some people cry. Some people speak with tongues. Some people fall on the ground. You'll feel it. Okay? When the Lord fills you with the Holy Ghost. It's unmistakable. Okay? All right, let me see if there's uh, any more demons I need to speak to or anything else about finances. Okay, Holy Ghost telling me to do this. All right, those of you that want an increased financial flow, put your hands on whatever device you're looking at me at. Put your hands on the screen. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak and release the full financial flow to all who believe. Uh, speak and release your word, oh God, that we're going to eat in plenty and be satisfied. And the floors are going to be full of wheat and you're going to send us corn and wine and oil and the vats are going to overflow with wine and oil. I speak and release, oh God, the financial anointing to all that believe right now. And they'll receive your fullness to a place of more than enough and walk in the richness of the oil and the fatness. In Jesus' name, I declare and I release it. Amen. Now, I felt that virtue flowing through my hands while I was praying, okay? Amen and amen. All right, well, if there are no more uh, prayer requests, then I'm going to pray the closing prayer. Thank you so much for those of you that tuned in live. Thank you for your comments and your feedback, for uh, your support. And remember, you can always watch me on uh, Facebook uh, on the replay, Periscope on the replay. I post the link on my Twitter, and also you can watch my YouTube channel. Again, the way to find me online is to hashtag PDT. Always hashtag PDT, Prophet David Taylor. That's the way to find me to be sure it's me. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We just love you so much. We just bless your name. 
you are such a good God. You are a God that is good beyond our imagining. We cannot imagine and understand your goodness with our minds, but you didn't ask us to understand it with our minds. You asked us to believe, and we believe you, God. We believe you for good things. We believe you for our fatness and corn and wine and oil and wheat and more than enough. And we confess, oh God, that our floors are going to be full of wheat and our vats are going to overflow with wine and oil. And you're going to send us grain and wine and oil, seed, oh God, fatness and opulence. We confess it and we believe it and we thank you for it, oh God. And we can't wait to walk in this new level so that we might be a testimony to the unbelievers, oh God, so that we can show them how good our God takes care of us. We thank you for it and we believe you for it and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, y'all, amen and amen. Well, thank you again for tuning in live. I'll be here uh, same time next week, 2.30 on Sunday. And then for the second Thursday in April, I'll be on 7 o'clock p.m. for my No More Genie series where we'll, we'll talk about getting rid of our genie concept of God and replace it with true faith, okay? Thank you so much. God bless. And remember, it's time to walk in the fullness of corn, wine, and oil, and wheat, and we're going to eat in plenty. Amen, and God bless.